Ruffins of the University of Maryland. Don? Good gang tackling that time by the Gophers. They pursued down the line of scrimmage real well to shut off Scott as he was trying to go wide. It's going to force a passing situation now from the Terrapins. Minnesota has really done a super job on Scott. Seven. Let's watch it again, Don. From the ground level, Scott, number 33, the ball carrier, running with determination. He's not going to be denied. Once he gets the ball, he's already got his heads and shoulders down. Look at him stumbling up there. He's excited about this ball game. He loves it. Came on late in the year, but did an excellent job for Jerry Claiborne. Mike Sotsko with a point after attempt. Maryland on top, nine to seven. The kick is good. And Maryland on top of Minnesota now, 10 to 7. This is the first Hall of Fame Classic. We are here in the from the three empires to reduce the sun's heat. This building, keeping people more comfortable and air conditioning costs lower. In fact, it actually stops up to 75% of the sun's energy, and that can be a very comfortable difference. The 3M Company. This Christmas card was sent to you by the people at Miller High Life. Merry Christmas. Point, you have 22 officials on the field waving in different directions. The official initially said Maryland had the football. Now have they changed that? Maryland has recovered a key fumble for the second time here in the first half. They'll have it first and ten. 
at the 14-yard line of Minnesota. And the Maryland side of the field is understandably excited. Jerry Claiborne, right in the middle of your screen there with the headset on. Three times Avery has... the Maryland offense. Minnesota really has to hold tough here. They're down 10 to 7. Maryland's got the momentum as they say. Ball knows right about the 10 yard line. Second down and about 6 yards to go. They need the 4 yard line. Here comes Minnesota where they drawn off. Where they drawn off will wait for the officials. Yes. Motion against Maryland. Glenn Nick, number 68, moved on that Maryland line. And that penalty will hurt the Terrapins. Ball now at the 15-yard line. And it's second down and 11 yards to go for the Maryland Terrapins with 5.35 to play in the first half of this first Hall of Fame Classic. Maryland on top, 10 to 7. Larry Dick, senior quarterback. Firing for White, what a catch! First down, goal to go, Maryland at the two-yard line. Again, Dick and White hook up. In Great a pass catch. Play. Great catch by White that time. Kent Foxworth is playing the defensive position now for the Gophers. He was almost there. He was there, as a matter of fact, in great position. Just a great catch by Chuck White. Back to the live action. First and goal, Maryland from the two-yard line. Cozio is now tradition pullback for Maryland. First and goal for the Minnesota two in the third. With five and a half minutes to play in the half. Scott to the goal line. And Minnesota trying to pull up their belts here and stop Maryland. They only got one in the play. Second and goal for the one. Right away. Good blocking on the right side of that Maryland. Mike Yates, the guard. Larry Stewart, the tackle. Doing a good job blowing the Gophers off of the line of scrimmage. Maryland trying to make it 17 to seven with Mike Sachko. Low snap. Handle, and good is good. And Maryland has taken a 17 to seven lead. is a real treat for all you football fans. blazing efforts, football would not be the great game it is today. And that's why I'm so proud of the National Football Foundation for honoring these stars each and every year at their dinner in New York City. And right now I'd like to show you the kind of star that they honor at their dinner. Let's take a look at action from 1950. This is Penn versus Dartmouth. Keep your eyes on number 44, Francis <laughs> on that afternoon of 490 yards. Look at those moves around the Dartmouth defenders. He gave... 
but he gained even more through the air. 207. Completed 20 out of 29 passes, and 14 of them were completions in a row. An outstanding performance by Reds Bagnell, one of our Hall of Fame inductees. And right now, without further ado, let's meet all 12 of the guys honored this year by the National Football Foundation. Joe Bellino, halfback, Navy. He won both the Heisman and the Maxwell Awards. Ziggy Zorowski, tackle, Notre Dame. Never missed a minute due to injury. Jim Danielle, tackle, Ohio State. He joins brother Averill in the Hall of Fame. Harrison Sam Francis, fullback, Nebraska, an All-American in football and track. The late century Milstead, Wabash, Yale, tackle, a star at two schools. Leo Namalini, tackle, Minnesota, never played football until college. Reds Bagnell, tailback, Penn, he earned nine varsity letters. Bill Banker, halfback, Tulane, the blonde blizzard, a dazzler in the open field. Rod Franz, guard, Cal Berkeley, three-time All-American from the Pacific Coast. Bob McLeod, halfback, Dartmouth, perhaps the greatest player in Dartmouth history. Gale Sayers, halfback, Kansas, a five-time All-Pro with the Bears. Lenny Casanova, coach, Santa Clara, Pitt, Oregon, a master in rebuilding football programs. He won 106 games. We'll be right back and hear some words from some of our award winners, plus have more highlights of the Hall of Fame dinner right after this word from Black & Decker. I'm going to do something only a Bob Lilly would do. And I'm going to use the new Black & Decker Best Line Router. It's the best home use router we've ever made. It's going to trim the ends and make a nifty edge and dovetail this drawer. It's even going to write there. Here, Coach. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. The new Black & Decker best line of power tools. Hello again, Don Tollison of Mizzou Network Control. We promised you a front row seat at the actual Hall of Fame dinner, and right now we're going to deliver. We're going to give you a chance to hear how a couple of our Hall of Fame inductees reacted to their great honor. First off, we'll hear from a man who served his country very well, Navy's Joe Bellino. Uh, it means, I'm, I'm sure, a lot to the Naval Academy, to, uh, to many of my friends that were backers of mine during my, uh, my college days uh, on the football field, and I'm very happy for it. And now let's hear from the first man ever inducted into the Pro and College Hall of Fames in the same year, Gail Sayers. Words can't describe you know, how I feel in being elected to both Halls of Fame both the National Football League Hall of Fame and the Pro Hall of Fame. Uh, this speaks a great deal about the quality of the players that I played with in the National Football League, also in, the, uh, in my college days at Kansas University. In addition to the football players honored, the Football Foundation also gave awards to two distinguished Americans. The Gold Medal Award was presented by the chairman of the Football Foundation, Vincent Dratty. The man who received the award, General Lewis Wilson, U.S. Marine Corps. Now, this gold medal award, however, is not really a tribute that can be given to an individual. I'm sure that any of your past recipients would feel, as I do, that they themselves did not win the award, or whatever, reach whatever goals they achieved in life, on their own merit. All of us had help, a great deal of it. And I am most certain that when you select your gold medal, you are very aware well of that fact. This year, the football found the executive vice president of the University of Notre Dame, Dr. Edmund George. Football is as much a part of the American scene in the fall as the multicolored leaves, and is welcomed with equal enthusiasm by millions of enthusiastic fans. We should never forget, however, that it is a game. Let us not delude ourselves, as some people seem to have done, into thinking that football is the most important activity of our national life. Rather, let us accept that it is a game of skill, a game of thrills, a game of inches, a game of courage, a game of spirit, 
a game of luck, a game of teamwork. In brief, a combination of factors which inevitably produce a few hours of soul-stirring excitement. General Wilson, Father Joyce, and all of us football fans will have a very special thing to remember next summer. That's when the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame building is scheduled to open. <laughs> the president of the Birmingham Foundation. Fred, I know you have to be pleased. I'm just very happy, and I'm also happy that we're partners with the National Football Hall of Fame putting on a showcase for college football, Howard, and we're just happy. And this gentleman to the other side of me, it's a special privilege for me to, uh, to uh, be alongside of him. He has a privilege here in college football. I am shortly with him early 50s from Princeton University, Dick Kattemeyer, who is president of the National Foundation. Dick, you have to be very pleased with the attendance here, which is uh, very close to the 50,000 mark and a good first Howard, it's a wonderful experience for us. Our partners, the Birmingham Football Foundation, are great people, and uh, we think this is an event that is both signal for us and signal for college football, and we're looking forward to many uh, happy... ...work from the Longines Whitnauer Watch Company. This uh, tremendous watch, I know you're going to enjoy it. Uh, and uh, lots of success the rest of the way for continued Hall of Fame classics through the years. Thank you, Howard. We want to thank the Ms. Lou Television Network and uh, all of you for your support. And again, we all, I'm sure Fred, Cecil, and myself, and everybody else associated with our groups are very happy to be here today, indeed. Gentlemen, continued success for the Hall of Fame classic. Thank you very much. All right, at halftime, 17-7, Maryland leading Minnesota, and we'll return to the Hall of Fame classic right after these words from your local stations. the Minnesota Gophers 17 to 7. It's really been a great night for these uh, fine football people here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's been a festive mood the entire week. 
They've been after a bowl game down here, Don Perkins, for 11 years. Fred Linksington and, and uh, Cecil Stubbs and uh, all the people down here have, have really been after it. And uh, once they got it, they put the show on, as you see here at halftime at Legion Field. And the first half was a great show as well, Don Perkins. It certainly was. They wanted a bowl game. They got a good win. Close first half, statistic-wise, but Maryland with a nice, comfortable 10-point lead here at halftime. Well, I'll tell you, the record for a first-ever bowl game was 52,000 in the Fiesta Bowl. Now, the crowd here tonight is estimated right around 50,000. However, I think uh, without taking anything away from the Fiesta Bowl people and the five people in your neck of the woods, uh, that bowl game down there at Arizona State is the primary team, and here they've got two teams that are from Alabama. They've drawn close to 50,000 people. Brewing Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. The 3M Company with warm wishes for a happy holiday season. Brought to you in part by the United States Army. By Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi Cola bottler. Have a Pepsi Day. And by the makers of English leather grooming aids for men. All right, the first half highlights brought to you by the 3M Company. The 17 to 7 first half. And it was Minnesota that struck first in the contest, but first, uh, Kent Kinsman was stopped. But a goal line stand by the Maryland. They were successful on this play. Some great gang tackling as he tried to go over the top. And uh, Kinsman was not successful on this play. However, Kinsman not to be denied from a yard out. Straight ahead through the heart of the line for the touchdown. That was Barbara that made the score for Minnesota. And at that point, they let it 7 to nothing. But the Terps were not to be denied. The field goal, they cut it to 7 to 3, and then took the lead as George Scott went straight ahead for the first of his two touchdowns in the first half. And at this point, as Scott dives over the goal line to put the Terps ahead. At that point, they were ahead 10 to 7. Scott later scored from a yard out to give Maryland the first half lead. They now Thirty-seven yards, and uh, Avery for Minnesota has passed for over fifty percent as well. Eight of fifteen for ninety-three yards. So you get one hundred and thirty-seven yards passing for Maryland against sixty-two on the ground, while Minnesota's only put together fifty-eight yards rushing against ninety-three through the air. 
You know, Howard, another interesting uh, statistic is that Minnesota has more first downs than Maryland, even though they trail by 10 points. They've got 10 first downs to 7 for Maryland. Well, Maryland has had two key fumble recoveries in this game. There have been two fumbles in uh, both times by Minnesota, and both times Maryland has recovered the football, and they have really hurt Minnesota. One time Minnesota was driving. They fumbled the ball inside the 10-yard line. Maryland took the ball. The other time, Minnesota fumbles. Maryland recovers inside the 10-yard line. They go in to score. So Maryland has been a team. And also, we have to take uh, into account the two-yard punt uh, that uh, Minnesota had out. But as it turns out, it, you can't sell Minnesota short. I have a feeling that uh, this club uh, that plays in a great conference, the Big Ten, a team that beat Michigan, a team that was only down 17-7 to to Ohio State in the fourth quarter before the wheels came off, uh, a team that beat uh, UCLA, <laughs> a team that's beaten actually uh, both teams in the Rose Bowl. you, you got to think they're going to come back in the second half, Don Perkins, and uh, make a good account of it. They're a young ball club, especially offensively. They made a lot of mistakes in the first half of the contest. Defensively, they just had poor field position oftentimes. It'll be tough. It'll be a good ball game in the second half. You know still. the toughest thing, Don and Howard, is going to be to pick an defensive player of the game because there have been so many of each variety here in the first half. Well, right now, uh, defensively, you've got to credit the Maryland front line uh, because they've, they've just completely closed off everything Minnesota has tried to do inside. And I don't know if uh, Minnesota in the locker room at halftime is talking about maybe try to exploit the outside. Uh, maybe they should, I don't know. I'm not a coach, I'm a broadcaster. And if I were a coach, I'd have a lot more gray hair, I'll tell you that. But uh, on this, by the same token, Minnesota's done a great job on George Scott. Scott's carried the ball 17 times for 46 yards, and that is only a little better than three yards a carry. And I'm sure you, Mr. Perkins, would not be happy in your own career with the Cowboys for three yards a carry. Can make for a very long evening. You know, the thing I think that has really turned this game around in Maryland's favor in the first half of the contest is the pass rush put on the because they started off the ball very well for the Gophers, but into the second quarter, the pass rush did start to come on by Maryland. He dropped the ball a couple of times trying to throw it. All right, I made uh, one observation the first half, Don. I like your opinion on this. Avery of Minnesota, at any time he has dropped back, Three times, I should say specifically, he had cons considerable deep drops, 16, 17-yard drops, twice. Uh, one, he fumbled a football, and it seems like only those three times uh, he had. I think when he's rolled out, he's had more time to throw the ball because he is a threat as a runner, and I think they respect that. But when he drops back. Then the Maryland Terrapins turn loose on him, and they have. They sacked him. Well, when he's rolling out, as you say, he is a threat as a runner, and he's going to make people play honestly. He's going to make. Twelve thirty-five to play in the third period. Maryland on top, 17-7, first and ten at the Minnesota 35-yard line. George Scott, he got a couple inside the 35-yard line at about the 33-yard line. Minnesota's defensive front solved that play. George Scott, yeoman work here in the Hall of Fame Classic in Birmingham. These people here will not soon forget this sophomore running back from Inwood, New York. He's they put certainly on quite won't. a show. Held pretty much in check the first half, but he's getting loose here in the second half for some nice rambles up the middle of that gopher line. Second down, eight yards to go from the 33-yard line of Minnesota. Maryland on the move. Larry Dick, fake handoff this time. He has room. Now he fires intended for Sievers at the 18-yard line. I'll tell you one thing, Maryland is not sitting on a 10-point lead. Larry Dick is firing the football. Well, he's a 60% passer, and I think he ought to take his shots at it. Well, there are certain things you cannot plan when you do a bowl game. You can sell all your tickets and do all your affairs and, and everything, but you can't determine the weather, and you can't determine how well the teams will play. And I think 
but the people here in Birmingham have gotten uh, good results on both ends here. It's been a beautiful evening. Temperature in the 40s. And they've gotten a good football game. Dick on third down and eight. He popped it up. That's a fumble. Maryland to the 26-yard line. That's going to be a little shy of a first down, but indicative of the way things have been going for the Terrapins. Don Rhodes, the center, alertly picked it up. That was a fumble, not a pass attempt. And Jeff Carr was the man that caused that fumble on behalf of the Gophers. You see him put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, Larry Dick. Drop back pass this time. Now Dick sees right there, number 39, Jeff Carr coming in on him. Dick is trying to scramble out of it. Carr knocks the ball loose, and Don Rhodes recovers it for the Terrapins. Maryland is not going to go for the field goal. They need a yard to go. They need the 25. They're at the 26. Scott, did they stop him? Did they stop him? I believe they did. Let's see where they spot the football. They did stop him. And Minnesota with a great defensive stand right there, Don Perkins. And let's see if this gets the Gophers riled up a bit on offense. I tell you what, you can't fault anyone on that when the Gophers did a great job and Scott did a yeoman's job in trying to pick up that first and 10. Well, this is what a coach looks for in a game like this when you're down. He looks for a play to turn things around. Now it's up to the Minnesota offense. Avery will be in there at quarterback now. Kitzman is in there. Marion Barber is in there. Fraser. He is covered. Maryland gets him at the 25-yard line. And that Maryland defense continues to play well. Check it. It was Steve Bro that made the run around the left side. Bro and Maryland continues to make the plays. A strong ball club, Maryland is. Also with a lot of agility up and down that line. You look at a guy like Charlie Johnson who made the play number 99, 250-pounder, and he just... Stayed outside the great lateral pursuit. He just wouldn't let Bro get away from him. Second down and 10. Not much there. Maybe two yards. And that is all. Maryland refuses to let Minnesota run. Brad Carr, number 46. An outstanding defensive player, a senior. Brad Carr, number 46. He keys that defense. What a Watch linebacker him. he is from York, Pennsylvania. He's a senior. Let's look at him again on our replay. Working down that line, he sees where the ball carrier is. He fills that hole right between the defensive men and makes the stop. Good play that time by Brad Carr. Back to the live action with third down and nine. And Avery looking to go on top of the first down. Pressure, he got away, 30. He's not going to get the first down, though. He's close to the 35-yard line, but he needed the 36. So Maryland is held. Avery looks like he's limping a bit as he uh, comes back to the Minnesota side of the field. So we may see Carlton uh, again. In any event, punting situation. Dean Richards is deep. The punt straight up in the air. Another bad punt. Fair catch called for and made by Maryland by Chris Ward, who was one of the up men. And Maryland gets great field position and another bad punt. 17-yard punt with 9.08 to play in the third period, and Maryland on top already, 17-7. to The ball will be spotted at the 49-yard line of Maryland. We haven't seen many horses out there tonight, but we'll see some live from Gulfstream Park, the Florida Derby, Saturday, April 1st, on many of these Ms. Luce stations. Larry Dick, Scott, Trying to get to the outside, good defense by Minnesota. They came along that line of scrimmage, good lateral pursuit, knocked him out around the 50-yard line. The play made by Ken Foxworth, number 17. Doing a good job coming up from his quarterback spot. He's a sophomore, another one of those young fellas for the Gophers from St. Louis, Missouri. Foxworth has had his hands full tonight because Chuck White is making him work very hard back there. Uh, Chuck White runs some beautiful routes. Number five for Maryland. Gave Scott three on the play. They'll put it at the 48-yard line of Minnesota. Second down, seven yards to go. Scott in motion to the near sideline. Dick, quick pass, complete to the 40-yard line. 
quick pass to Chuck White, number five, six reception by White this evening. Nothing fancy about this route by run by Chuck White. Just a couple of steps and break it into the middle. Number five, Stan Sitsuma trying to cover him. Foxworth also back in the area. Nice pickup, though. No way you can cover that. No way. That quick pass. The timing's there. You can't defend against it. First down and 10 for Maryland now at the 39-yard line of Minnesota. Flag on the play. Scott got about three yards as he got close to the 36-yard line. Maryland, I believe, was in motion again. They were. So that play uh, will be nullified. The option now is up to Minnesota whether they want to accept that or not, and they probably will. The Maryland Terrapins got three in the play. The game started with Minnesota showing superiority, moving down the field. Their defense was tremendous. But Maryland took over the momentum late in the first quarter, and they haven't relinquished it yet. Minnesota has accepted the penalty, move it back five yards, call it first down and 15 yards to go. The ball now spotted at the 44-yard line of Minnesota. Forty-seven thousand people here tonight at Legion Field for the first Hall of Fame game. Larry Dick has run the show all night for Maryland. Wants to throw it again. There goes White. What a catch! Oh, what a play by White at the eight-yard line. Weber was all over him, but White made the play. White ran toward the sideline, then cut up the field. I tell you what, Jim, I've got to give a lot of credit also to Larry Dick because he really got smashed on that one. As soon as he released the ball, he got clobbered. And, of course, we all saw what Chuck White did. Just a fantastic leaping fingertip catch on that one. Let's take a look at it again from the end zone. You're going to see the quarterback, Larry Dick, rolling to his left. Gets the ball off right there. He gets crushed. Now watch this nice fingertip catch by number five, Chuck White. Chuck White, seven catches, 102 yards thus far of the game. Maryland for the second time tonight has a first and goal from the eight-yard line. Scott fumbled the ball. Falls on it at the 15-yard line. Now loses it. Minnesota. Minnesota has the football. The first fumble by Maryland that they didn't recover. And Minnesota makes the defensive play. Didn't look like George Scott ever got the handle on this one. There's the pitch. He almost lost one earlier. Looks like he almost recovers it, but he doesn't. Scoots away from him, and who did recover it was Keith Brown. Went right underneath his leg. Number 34, Keith Brown, the strong safety from St. Louis, came up with it for the Gophers. So the Gopher defense has stopped Maryland again. They've stopped them twice driving here in the third period. And Maryland has called a timeout from Birmingham, Alabama. This is the first Hall of Fame Classic. Pete, how do you spell relief? When I get acid indigestion, I spell relief R-O-L-A. I have gas. I spell the same for gas, R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaid spells relief. In this test with Rolaid's active ingredient, laboratory acid changes color to prove Rolaid's consumes 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid. Now, how do you spell relief? R-O-L-A-I-D-S. For acid indigestion and gas, Rolaid spells relief. It's your face. Chick loves your face with Super 2, the only twin blade cartridge with a Teflon coating that makes closeness really comfortable. It fits Track 2 handles, and it really loves your face. It's your face, that Chick love it. Chick Super 2, regular or adjustable. World Championship Tennis. Uh, <laughs> look at the crowd in the background. They're great. Here at Birmingham, Alabama, World Championship Tennis coming up on the Mislu Television Network. Avery, the quarterback. Marion Barber to the 20-yard line. Barber looked for a moment as if he was going to be able to get outside there. But Joe Maryland. Muffler, the defensive end, stopped him, though, for the Terrapins. Took a good tackle by Muffler because Barber was rambling on his way. 
Maryland's uh, defensive ends in that wide tackle six aren't the kinds of defensive ends you think about 232 40 they're 25 210 they're very quick and they cover defense pass coverage so they're an outstanding football team there goes Kitzman rambling and Kitzman across the 25 to the 27 he has gotten the first down for the University of Minnesota so the Gophers get a first down as they try to drive there's 737 to play in the third period and Maryland on top 17 to 7 lots of time remaining in this one they've got their ball control game working for them Jim the problem with that is the more you handle the ball the more chances you have for errors and eventually it can catch up with you out of the eye formation from our ground level camera now we pick up action it's Kitzman he's got room he's out to the 33 yard line now Kent Kitzman the sophomore from Rochester Minnesota beginning to run again you know Don you brought up something very interesting how many 85 86 yard drives do you see in a game coaches will tell you let them start out from the 15 20 yard line and if they're going to score they're going to have to grind it out on us you don't see those long drives too often Second down, five yards to go for Minnesota. They're at their own 33-yard line, 6.50 to play, third period. Maryland by 10. Avery Long counting again. Kitzman, flag goes down as Kitzman got to the 35-yard line. We may have motion against Minnesota again. Oh, wait and see. Minnesota feels that it's against Maryland. And it looks like they're going to be right. Infraction against Maryland. No doubt they'll take this. It was second down and five going in. They will, and I believe it's going to give them a first down as well. Maryland offsides. First down. First down for Minnesota. Ball at the 37 and a half yard line. The Golden Gophers bring it out again. Avery running the show. He has Barber behind him along with Kitzman. Throw the flanker. They go to Kitzman. He's got room again. He starts to ramble. He goes across the 40 to about the 42, 43 yard line. Another five yard pickup. And Minnesota begins to grind it out, Don Perkins. Kitzman hasn't carried the ball an awful lot this evening, but I guess anything less than 40 carries is kind of a night off for him. Right. Since he did carry it 57 times. A new NCAA record in their 21 to nothing win over Illinois. And he's only carried it 11 times tonight. Second down, five yards to go. Kitzman carries for the 12th time. He gets across the midfield stripe into Maryland territory, down to about the 48-yard line. Another first down for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Coach Chuck Stoll on the sidelines with his coaches saying, hurry up, get it going. Well, the last time, they, they got up very quickly. He, he wants to do something now there's six minutes to go in the third period that seems like a lot of time to us but to a coach it's not a lot of time Kitzman again inside the 45 to about the 44 yard line he got four on that play call it second down and six yards to go and for those of you viewers that think Kitzman is carrying the ball an awful lot, I did mention he carried it 57 times. In that 57-time attempt, he carried it 13 times in succession. So this is not unusual for him. Maryland, and there is an outstanding defensive play at the 46-yard line by Neil Alkowitz. Neil Alkowitz, the other linebacker. Carr gets a lot of credit. He deserves it, but Alkowitz, is an outstanding defensive player in his own right, and watch him here. Listen on this one, Olkowitz was. He's a linebacker from uh, Spring City, Pennsylvania, doing a great job. He caught Kitzman before he got out of his tracks on that one, stopped him short of the line of scrimmage. So it brings up third down and eight yards to go, a loss of four on the play. Avery has a man. Anhorn knocked down inside the 40-yard line at the Maryland 38-yard line. And that's going to be very close to a first down. Avery seems to have a little more time when he rolls out. We're looking at the receiver. Anhorn on his route this time. Just a short square out, pick up some yardage, drive the defender back. Jeff Anhorn did that. 
Avery was right on target. Like I said, when he rolls out, it gives him just a little bit more time from the Maryland Terrapins, and he gets more of his passes off. Well, they're bringing the chain gang completely across the field to measure for this first down. Minnesota, an impressive drive here in the third period with 4.44 to play in the period. They trail Maryland 17 to 7. They have it. You saw the reaction from the Minnesota side of the field. They told you what happened before the official did. We're going to see another great game tomorrow night. I feel that really tangerine ball over many of these Mislu television stations as the Florida State-Texas Tech game gets underway tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Chuck White has uh, been an outstanding receiver for Maryland, but Jeff Anhorn, the 6'3 junior from Blue Island, Illinois, has been outstanding for Minnesota. He's had four receptions. First down and 10 for Minnesota at the 38 of Maryland. Bro, he got about three. Got to the 36-yard line. Maryland saw that pretty well. Ted Clawby down at the bottom of that pile. Ted Clawby, number 61, is always at the bottom of the pile, it would seem. Time remaining, 425 to play in the third period. 17-7, Maryland on top of Minnesota, and the Golden Gophers are on an impressive drive. Kitzman. Stopped at about the 35. He may have inched forward uh, to about the 34-yard line. Brad Carr was there, number 46. So was Ted Clawby, number 61. It brings up third down and six yards to go. The ball at the 34-yard line of Maryland. They need about the 28-and-a-half-yard line for a first down. To say this is critical is an understatement. Down by 10 with 3.35 to play in the third period. Avery runs the show. Long counting again. Avery looking. Great defensive play. The defensive play made by Jim Garber. Again, he's a defensive end, the kind of defensive end we talked about before. 205 pounds, very quick, who can cover a receiver. Garber, great defensive play. Brings up fourth down. Now the decision here, as Maryland's defense awaits to see how Minnesota's going to play it. The decision here, does he go for a field goal here? Well, I think that decision's already made. Number 15, Terry Simmons, the punter, is out there on the field. Well, perhaps it's not made. Now well, they've called a the timeout tears. now, Don. Excuse me. They've called a timeout. Maybe they want to think about it again. This is a critical time in the game. They're down by 10 points. They're going to need a field goal. They've got Paul Rogin in there now. He's the field goal kicker. They brought the putter, Terry Simmons, back off. Rogin is in there. Again, as we told you early on in the telecast, he is one of the outstanding field goal kickers in the country. He won four of Minnesota's games outright with field goals, and most of them were last-second field goals. So he is more than capable. This is going to be a 52-yard try, though. And his best for the year was 47. He kicked 18 out of 26, though, for a Big Ten record, three short of the NCAA record. But his longest was 47. While he's only a sophomore from Farmington, Minnesota, he's got the pressure on him right here. If they kick a field goal, they could even have fake on their mind. Anhorn will be the holder. Jeff Anhorn, the receiver. He is kicking. Blocked! Maryland blocked it. Anhorn picks it up. He's going nowhere. Spilled at the 45 yard line. And again, Maryland's defense has I think made Lloyd the big Burris. Play. I think Lloyd Burris, number 25, the defensive back from Charlottesville, Virginia, was the one that blocked this attempted field goal by Paul Rogain. Let's take a look at it again. Anhorn, number 86, is the holder. The snap is in place. Rogain's there. And also number 25, Lloyd Burris, the defensive back from Charlottesville, Virginia, blocked it for the Maryland Terrapins. Now, Perkins, I must compliment you. You have fantastic eyes because we have a very high broadcast position here at Legion Field, and I can't believe you saw that. And I've got some excellent help down in the truck from Roger Schwing. <laughs> Roger, who does uh, our slow motion and isolate, I think the best in the country at that. Well... 
Maryland Terrapins. Uh, a lot of them go and see the Redskins play uh, in the area. And they must be uh, learning from Redskins special teams because uh, that's a typical Redskin play. You know, something like this really hurts the Minnesota Gophers. They ate up so much of the clock on that long drive, came out of it with nothing, and they're still 10 points down. 3-10 left in the third quarter. Maryland's got the ball. Maryland Terrapins, last season, one of the top teams in the country, undefeated, going to the Cotton Bowl, lost there to Houston. And uh, a lot of people um, in the Maryland area expected the Terrapins to have the outstanding team again. They kept a lot of the same people, but it was one of those years. The ACC, uh, a tough conference uh, this year. There's a penalty personal foul against Maryland. That'll bring it back to the 39-yard line of Maryland. However, the Terrapins will retain possession. In any event, the ACC with clubs like North Carolina, North Carolina State, and Clemson, all in bowl games along with Maryland, made it a tougher conference. They were 7-4. and four. They had a lot of injuries. And they have a chance here tonight to make the season a happier season. Right now, they lead 17-7, 3-10 to play third period. Larry Dick rolling. He wants to run. He does. But the defensive play is made as he's spilled at the 40-yard line. I think, Don, what he did on that last play, I think that Larry Dick checked off at the line of scrimmage. He seemed to uh, readjust and make an adjustment. He was looking for Chuck White to the near sideline and decided to go with it. He almost had a good play. Rick Dalton there tripped him up, and he only got back to the line of scrimmage, but he was stumbling and almost broke free on it. Rick Dalton is 6'3", 210. He is a freshman from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Larry Dick now looking to pass. A lot of pressure. Minnesota coming on now. And Dick is sacked back at the 31-yard line. Larry Dick sacked that time. And the Minnesota defense is up to it again. Jim Rodham, one of the defenders in on that one. Marion Barber, he's only 17 years old. What a future he has at the University of Minnesota. Two minutes, five seconds to play, third period. The very first Hall of Fame Classic here in Birmingham. Jim Carvelis, Don Perkins, Howard David, Maryland. To George Scott. And Scott is tripped up at the 36-yard line. Maryland playing it very safe that time. Not about to put the ball in the air, make a mistake with a desperate pass. They'll punt it away now with a minute 39. And the Gophers should have it again. Edwards and Weber will be dropping. That's Sachko, the punter. High snap, pressure, got it away. Fair catch. Weber makes that fair catch at the 26-yard line. Howard David. Maryland had too many players on the field, Jim. And the one player tried to scamper off in a hurry. And the official was standing right there. There's no way he made it. And they're probably going to mark it off against the Golden Gophers. Well, Maryland... Probably will be asked to punt again. A pretty good effort by Sasko that time. No return from Weber. Now let's see whether they're going to do it again. Flag on the play with a minute 22. It's going to be very difficult to give you the offensive and defensive players of the game. Black and Decker is going to award the defensive player of the game award. That'll be tough to pick. And Schick as the offensive player. And I might let. Tom Perkins and Howard David make those selections because that's a little difficult for this guy. Uh, he, no, he has no courage, Don. No courage at all. <laughs> we'll make a decision for you, Jim. <laughs> I think what we should do is let the folks from Black and Decker who are up here with us make the decisions for us. We'll put it right on the dime. Well, Minnesota's made a decision. They'll just take the football at the 26-yard <laughs> line. And Barber at the 32-yard line. Marion Barber out to the 32-yard line. He got about five yards in the play. Well, it's second down. Offensive player of the game, an award from Schick. Defensive player, Black and Decker. Second down, four yards to go at the 32-yard line. Minnesota to Kitzman. Pulling forward, Kitzman to the 37-yard line. Nothing fancy there, Don Perkins. Straight ahead blocking, good hard running. And Minnesota has a first down. First and 10 for the Golden Gophers, who lead Maryland in first downs this evening, but trail on the scoreboard. They're a great ball control ball club, but they've got to get some points on the board. 
41 seconds and the clock running here in the third period at Legion Field Hall of Fame Classic first and 10 for the Minnesota Gophers they trail by 10 Avery to Anhorn Anhorn great job to get away so far but they finally bring him down the defensive play made by Chip Garber again number 23 they bring him down at about the 46 47 yard line they'll mark it at the 46 it's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Thus far, Avery 11 for 18 through the air, unofficially 110 yards. Anhorn has caught five of the Avery aerials thus far. Seventeen to seven, Maryland over Minnesota in the first Hall of Fame Classic. You're about to see a demonstration of an incredible product the 3M company has come up with. That's right. Those are bikes, and you can clearly tell they're bikes, even 300 feet away from these headlights. All because 3M had the idea of using reflective material, like they developed for traffic signs, on bike tires, to make riding at night a lot safer. Now, doesn't that make sense? The 3M Company. Down the Columbia, the Willamette. The Sayus Law. From the great renewable forests, they come. Logs. Logs to build a better America. And Homelight is there. Homelight, the king. Rugged is the men who run. Men who fell the mighty fur and see it rise again. When the time in your life comes to get a chainsaw, get the king. Homelight, the chainsaw king. This is Television Sports USA, the Mislu Television Network. Let's pause for local station identification. Well, a lot of action in that third quarter, but no scoring. Lovely, lovely people here in Birmingham, Alabama. I won't say much more because the wife is watching. Today. Sort of speaks yes. for itself, doesn't it? Right. Doc. Yeah. 17-7. A big third down and one coming up for the Gophers. They go to their man, Kitchman. He gets it for him again, close to the 50-yard line. Well, Don Perkins and Howard David will not get much rest. They'll be on the air tomorrow night over most of these uh, Mislu television network stations to bring you the Tangerine Bowl. I'll be winging to Chicago to spend Christmas uh, with my family there, and I'll be watching you guys tomorrow night. Hope Santa Claus is good to you, Jim. A season's greetings to everybody from all of us at the Mislu television network. The shot of Jeff Anhorn, the fine wide receiver, junior from Blue Island, Illinois. All right, first and ten for Minnesota, down by ten. Kitzman, and he's stacked up, fumble, and it's recovered by Avery. Back at the 46-yard line, very alert play by Avery. What a lick that time. Let's look at Kitzman there. He's going to get hit right there by number 72, Ed Gull, a defensive back tackle, and there goes the ball squirting loose. Minnesota recovered it. Wendell Avery got back on it, but a great lick that time by Ed Gall. 
Avery got it back as we're back to the live action. Second down and 14 from the 46-yard line of Minnesota. Avery wants to go on top. He's rushed, and as a result, couldn't get much on the ball. And again, the defensive play made by Charlie Jansen. You know, Avery's throwing the ball a whole lot tonight for him. 19 attempts. He only averages seven or eight passes a game coming in tonight, so he's really unlimbered the right arm. Third down and 14 for Minnesota. 13-25 to play in the game. Avery. Deep drop. And they get him. Clowby was the first man in there, 61. Now watch him. Look at Clowby. He's really enthusiastic. Gall was in there as well. Fourth sack for Maryland's Terrapins, and they're really inspired now. Ball spotted back at the 33, Don. Those defensive linemen are coming off that line of scrimmage. A lot of pressure that time. Charlie Johnson, Bruce Palmer, Clawby. Punting situation for Minnesota. They've been punting all night long, it would seem. Good punt. Terrific punt. Richards will feel it the 33. And advance it to the 38-yard line. Maryland puts it in play there at their own 38 with 12.43 to play in the game. And Maryland on top, 17-7. To From Birmingham, Alabama, this is the first Hall of Fame Classic. Mr. Chester. Wow, hi, kids. We want a camera. It's a present for Mom. Well, how much do you have? This. Well, your mom will like a camera that's real simple. Polaroid's one step. You never focus. Just point it, press the button, and the motor hands you the picture. The SX-70 colors come up sharp and clear in minutes. Boy, mom's gonna be surprised. We'll take it. Polaroid's one step. The simplest camera ever. Can you believe it? I've really gone and done it. Finish school and join the army. But can I really cut it? Well, I think I'm gonna get the education of my life. If you're out of high school and you're ready for the education of your life, join the people who've joined the Army. I think I'm gonna get the education of my life. And I think it's just exactly what I need. Back at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, the fourth quarter of the first Hall of Fame Classic. Maryland leading 17 to 7. A lot of things planned for you in tomorrow night's game. We're going to be telling you about them in just a moment as Dick fires complete again to Chuck White at the 45 yard line of Minnesota. Eight receptions for Chuck White. What a combination that's been. As we said, tomorrow night, the Tangerine Bowl at halftime tomorrow night. The first annual Mislu Football News High School All-American team. And some outstanding high school players around the country will be on it. I think that's great. Don Tollefson will be handling that. Quick pass for White. Incomplete. He took quite a lick. He took quite a lick for number 17, Ken Foxworth. And Chuck White is on the field and he's a bit shaken up he got it in the back he's been taking a lot of shots as he's been catching the ball uh, he's been catching making all of those catches those kinds of catches this evening and that was sort of a surprise when that one slipped through but he did take quite a lick from Ken Foxworth Chuck White has had himself a night as Jimmy pointed out eight receptions 118 yards meanwhile Larry Dick on the other end of the aerial 11 for 17 for 176 yards and who do you pick Do you pick white do you pick Larry Dick do you pick Scott I mean it's a tough decision gentlemen and it's yours hey I said that you gentlemen were working tomorrow and Don <laughs> Tollefson handling that halftime but uh, Dwayne Dow will be handling the play by play tomorrow night in the Tangerine Bowl so You'll all be interested in watching that game. It should be a great one. There's a look at what Larry Dick for, did for the year. Passed for over 1,300 yards, and if you haven't seen him before, you realize why he did, watching that strong arm. Maryland trying to get to the outside and getting to the 41-yard line is Preacher Maddox, Alvin Maddox, who was the number two tailback behind Steve Atkins. 
And Scott took the job away from him. The Maryland very deep, as uh, you might imagine. Cozio, number 34, comes in for Dudish, 37. Who's done his uh, outstanding job as a blocking fullback. That's the way Jerry Claiborne plays it. Now, the officials uh, calling a timeout to discuss something. Tangerine Bowl tomorrow night. A lot of great bowl games on the Mislu Television Network, six to be exact. I'm looking forward uh, to that Blue Bonnet Bowl game down in uh, Houston, Texas, with Southern California against Texas A&M. Now, as uh, we look on the far side of the field, we may have an injury. Yes, an injured player for Minnesota. We'll be back after this message from your local station. Keith Brown, the strong side safety, was the injured player. He's on the bench being attended to as Larry Dick fires, intending it for receivers. He took quite a lick. Incomplete. That uh, hit administered by Craig Kirtland, who came in for the injured player, Keith Brown. Keith Brown, a junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, an outstanding strong safety. It looks like he's going to be all right, though. Good shot of the Maryland side of the field. They're happy at this point. They're going to be punting here with Mike Sachko. Sachko booms it high. Fair catch is made at the four-yard line. That's a bit surprising. It was surprising. I'm not sure that number 28, Bobby Weber, wanted to fair catch that one. But had he not caught it, the Terrapins were down in great position where I think they might have been able to down it even closer to the goal line. Interesting. I think one of the uh, Maryland special team players just circled around Weber as he saw the fair catch signal in case Weber wanted to let it bounce. He was going to be in position at about the one yard line. But still, Don, I must say, uh, it's still kind of a shaky decision. Yeah, certainly. Minnesota in the hole now as Keith Brown is still being attended to. Brown being attended to on the Minnesota bench. First down from the four yard line. Good run out here, pass the 10 to about the 11 yard line. I believe that was. Well, whoever it was, his numbers are off his, off his jersey. That might be Marion Barber. I believe you're right, Jim. Yes. Any event. No, that's Roy Artis. Roy Artis coming out of the game. Barber has come in to replace him. Let's bring up second down and three yards to go from the 11-yard line for Minnesota. They have 11 minutes, 16 seconds to get even in this game. Kitzman doesn't get much. He just gets a couple. The Maryland line hangs tough. They're going to need about two to three yards for a first down here. Third down, let's call it two down. Time is now becoming a factor with less than 11 minutes in this game and Minnesota down by 10 points. It's no time for a ball control kind of offensive attack. Ken Wipsinski, number 85, a tight end, comes in the game. And there is a fumble. Maryland has stopped him. Brad Carr, number 46, was at the bottom of that pile. So was Clavi. And again, who do you pick for defensive player? Fourth down for Minnesota. Minnesota in punt formation again. Coach uh, Stoll on the sideline. 
bit anxious now with 10 13 to play in the game and his club down 17 to 7. He needs a good punt here. Larry fumbles and Minnesota has the football and a big break for the Golden Gophers here. They needed a break on this one. Ralph Larry, the strong safety, was back. He wasn't necessarily the deep man back on this one, but it was a short punt. Larry got ready to field it, but evidently did not keep his eye on the ball. From Birmingham, Alabama, this is a Hall of Fame classic. This seven and a quarter inch Black & Decker circular saw just might be the finest saw for the money in America. It's not just the one and a third horsepower motor or the wraparound steel shoes. It's because when it has to work really hard, it can work and work and work really hard. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. Good. Now I can go to bed. No, uh, wait a minute. I want to give you a gift while we're alone. Uh, it's uh, something just for you. The washer and dryer. Now, come on. Will you be serious? Okay. Uh, close your eyes. Merry Christmas. Give her a diamond. It's forever. Minnesota with a big break. With 10 minutes to go in the game, they recover the Maryland fumble on the punt. They're at their own 47-yard line. Avery, the quarterback. He threw it away on purpose, under pressure. A lot of pressure that time from number 41, Chip Calder. That was a good play on Avery's part because he was going nowhere with it. He was under siege. Threw it in the general area of a receiver. There's a good shot of a Maryland defense has been outstanding tonight. People like Garber and Johnson, Brad Carr, Okowitz, Kalabi. Minnesota with 9.53 to play in the game, down by 10. Nothing. Nothing for Roy Artis as he has stopped at the 49-yard line. And a third down coming up and long. Third down and eight yards to go for Minnesota. Charlie Johnson stopping Roy Artis, number 40 on that one. You get a good look at the offensive huddle there. Number 41, Barry and Barber came in now for the Gophers. Came in for Artis on the third down and eight. Barber a good pass receiver as well as an outstanding runner. He's got time. No, he doesn't. He's taken down. Avery had time initially, then Maryland closed in on him. Palmer, number 98. Clowby, number 61. Johnson, number 99, also in on that. All the front four of the Terrapins putting the sack on Avery. Palmer made the stop. You know, I may have given Johnson credit for his sack uh, the last time before when it was Palmer again. There's Dean Richards back uh, in receiving position. Punt. And this time it's caught by Maryland. And it was Chris Ward who was protecting that ball with his life. So Maryland gets the football back. They fumble the ball away, but their defense again has done the job. They'll take over first and 10 at their own 36-yard line with 8.45 remaining in the game. Again, a tremendous gesture by Mark Mangus, an All-American candidate for this club. It would seem uh, each one of his four years here, he was hurt most of the season. He was going to play tonight because Coach Claiborne said, I'm going to play both of you in your last game. But at halftime, he said, Larry Dick's doing well. And now, I believe, there he is. Mangus is coming, has come in the game. Coach Claiborne has said, look, it's your turn now. Last game for Mark Mangus, Maryland not much in the middle. Maryland looking now to run that clock down, 8.37 and running. Mark Mangus, tremendous player, a great career at Maryland. Certainly was, had high expectations for him this year before he was injured. He's a senior, so this will be his final game from Cumberland, Maryland. A beautiful part of the country. Western Maryland. 
Second down eight yards to go. Mark Mangus in for the first time tonight. Preacher Maddox in motion. Mangus firing. Whoops. Almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. Weber had a golden opportunity to pick that one off. And again, Maryland not concerned with running that clock much, Don. A sure surprising right. call. I think Alvin Maddox was the intended receiver on that one. I really couldn't tell because the only guy that had a shot at it was 28, Bobby Weber, who almost intercepted it. Eight minutes exactly to play in the game as Minnesota's defense tries to hold Maryland and get that football back. It's at the 38-yard line of Maryland. The Terrapins lead the Gophers 17-7. All the scoring in the first half. Mark Mangus on third down and eight yards to go. Mangus a good runner and he gets it close to the 45 yard line but that's going to be two yards shy of a first down and Minnesota's defense has done the job Mike Sachko and the Maryland punting team comes in with 743 in the clock running that's how much time we have in this very first Birmingham Hall of Fame classic what a job they've done down here Sachko not a very good punt Weber makes the fair catch at the 29-yard line. And we got a flag down on the field. There's going to be a roughing the kicker on this one. We'll take a look at it again. I think we're going to see Jeff Carr, number 39. Sachko right there is the kicker. Whole host of uh, number 39s, one of them. Jeff Carr is in there. Number 88 also is in there, Mark Merrill. But it is roughing the kicker. So Maryland's going to keep the ball. To the Maryland Terrapins. Have the football now. It's going to be marked close to the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Seven twenty-eight to play in the game. Maryland Terrapins from the Atlantic Coast Conference leading Minnesota's Gophers from the Big Ten. There's Carlson, who was in for two plays at the start of the second half, but then went out uh, for Avery. You see him warming up on the sideline. And we'll probably see him the next time Minnesota gets the ball. Right now it's Maryland with the football. Larry Dick wants to pass again. Chuck White, he's hammered incomplete. White really got it from Edwards that time at about the 26-yard line. Chuck White who has made eight receptions tonight. And he's paid the price for it on a few of them. He was shaken up earlier in this fourth quarter, but he's all right, still in the game. Had a great evening, Chuck White, number five. Second down, 10 yards to go. The incomplete pass has stopped the clock. 7-23. Mark Mangus, the quarterback, playing his last collegiate game for Maryland. Mangus, a good runner now, trying to get outside. He does. Mangus. Breaks it inside the 30-yard line. Knee touched it about the 28 or 9. Mark Mangus got a first down. Mangus, an outstanding runner, showed you his ability right there, Don. He certainly is, and if you're going to have a running quarterback, I can see why you want Mike, Mark Mangus in the lineup. Keith Edwards brought him down, but a nice pickup by Mangus. Mark Mangus, a big guy. Mangus stands at 6'3", 215 pounds, and he can run around you, and he can run over you. Ball at the 28 of Minnesota. Dean Richards, 45, has come in the game. You see him now. He'll be flanked to the left side. First and 10, Maryland. 28 of Minnesota. Time in Maryland's favor, 650. Mangus rolling left. Mangus now pitches back to Preacher Maddox. And Maddox all the way down to the 15. And now we see Mangus' specialty running and the option play. Oh, it's nice to see, too, because his timing was excellent on that. Picked up yardage when he knew he was going to get hit. Made the pitch at the proper time to the trailing back, Alvin Maddox. At 34 is Keith Brown, who was injured before. You see he's back in the game, but it doesn't look like he's 100% at this moment. It's got to be tough to defense Maryland when they can give you a Larry Dick, who's a great passer, and then they turn around and give you Mark Mangus, who can run the football. He'll run the option, and Minnesota's defense is being tested again. But to their credit, they've had a terrific defensive effort tonight against an excellent Maryland team. First down and 10 for Maryland. The 16-yard line of Minnesota. Maddox in motion to the right. Whistles, a flag down.
Uh, a little bit too much time for the Terrapins that time, making a decision on what they were going to run. Well, that penalty has been called on Minnesota three times tonight, and now Maryland taking too much time. Time is in their favor. 6-11 to play in the game. They lead by 10, and they are knocking at the door again. First down and 15 yards to go from the 20-yard line of Minnesota. Dudas is in there at fullback. Preacher Maddox is a tailback. Mangus is the quarterback. Rich is split to the right. In motion, Maddox. Mangus rolling right. He wants to run again. Flag on the play. Mangus at the 15. Maryland's going to be called for holding, I believe, around the 20 yard line. Maryland, I believe, is going to be caught for holding. Maryland Ball Club's a good ball club. Uh, we mentioned the injury problem that they had earlier in the year. Uh, 23 of the top 44 players missed at least one game during the season because of injuries. And with those kind of a problem, the Terrapins got off to a slow start. I think they were one and three early in the year. That's for sure. A devastating loss to West Virginia early uh, in the season really set Maryland back. And as you see, they were one and three. They came on very strong late in the season. Got this bowl bid. They felt it was a chance to uh, to recoup a bit, to make amends for uh, for what is to them a mediocre season. To most clubs around the country, seven and four is pretty good. You bet. They won six out of their last seven bowl games. As we look at the walk-off going against the Maryland Terrapins. I believe the penalty was against Larry Stewart, the offensive tackle. Howard David is down on the field. Howard. All right, Jim, uh, on the sidelines behind the Minnesota bench and not very happy Minnesota bench, we have Steve Brett, who's the vice president of marketing for Black & Decker. Steve, uh, we've chosen the defensive player of the game, which Black & Decker will make the presentation, and it goes to number 46 of Maryland, Brad Carr. Right, right. Congratulations to Brad, an outstanding performance here tonight, and also to the Maryland team. Thank you very much, Steve Red, Vice President of Marketing for Black & Decker. And now let's go back up to the booth and Jim Carvelis. Mangus, end zone! Intercepted. Intercepted. Weber. Right. That was a great play by Weber. In the end zone, he made the interception. And again, Minnesota holds ground. From Birmingham, Alabama, this is the first Hall of Fame Classic. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on and taste the Pepsi way. Come on, come on, come on and have a Pepsi day. I need advice. Okay. This guy at school, mm -hmm. great hair, but he's got dandruff. Ugh. Just a few flakes and itching. Oh, honey, tell him. Gail, hmm? I've got something to tell you. People notice dandruff, whether they tell you or not. With head and shoulders, you don't have to give up beautiful hair to control those flakes and itches. It's so mild, your hair is silky clean and shining every time. Uh, how's that guy at school? Always. <laughs> Get head and shoulders. Strong against dandruff. Gentle on your hair. Gary White, number nine. He's the fullback in there right now from Mankato, Minnesota. Check that from Rockdale, Texas. He's a freshman. Second down and five yards to go for the Gophers. They need 10 points. They've got 519 to play in the game. They stay on the ground again to the fullback. And he is really hit. That was Palmer. Number 98, Bruce Palmer. He's still excited about it. He likes the way things are going out there this evening. Terrapin's doing an excellent job defensively. Gary White on the carry, 4.58 to play in the game. The clock is running, third down and two for Minnesota. They've got to put the ball in the air. Carlson at quarterback. Avery played most of the game. That's Anhorn number 86 split to the near side. Carlson will take it. It'll be very close. It'll depend on whether the referee spots the football. I don't think he made it. Good lick that time by number 24, Mickey Palana. 
Defensive end, a senior from Canfield, Ohio. He didn't make it. It's fourth down. Jeff Anhorn uh, now coming out of the ball game. 17 to 7, Maryland on top as you see Barber and Kitzman coming back into the lineup. And they're going to be going for it, no doubt about that, with 409 to play down by 10. The Golden Gophers, critical third down to say the least. He'll sneak it for the first down. The clock continues to run. Carlson going over the top that time. He picked up the first down yardage. Just a little leap over the line there by the quarterback. You see him just veer off to the left. Good airborne. Right on the shoulders of number 68 leading the way, Marty Stein for the Gophers. Pass it to the 31-yard line with 348, 347. The clock is running. 17-7, Maryland over Minnesota. The Gophers with the football. Carlson, the quarterback. Long count. Broken play. And Carlson is taken down by the aggressive Maryland defense again. Play made by Kenny Watson, number 56 for Maryland. Brad Carr was out of the ball game. He's coming back in, the defensive player of the game. Got the award from Black and Decker, outstanding senior. From York, Pennsylvania. What a career he's had at the University of Maryland. Three minutes to play in the game. 17-7 Maryland, Minnesota. Surprisingly, he has not put the ball in the air. Now Carlson will. Fires short, incomplete. Tender for number 48, Jeff Thompson on that one. He was well covered, did not hang on to it anyway, but had he hung on to it, he would have picked up very little yardage. Neil Alkowitz, the linebacker, made the stop. And it's now third down and nine with 2.51 to play in the game. We alluded to our great slow motion uh, man, Roger Swing, in the truck. Bill Swing has been our director, usual outstanding job. Dudley Freeman has kind of coordinated things upstairs here. Claude Piano producing in the truck. Judy Shills and Arbitafon. And, of course, uh, Vic Piano. Great effort by the Mizzou team. Now Carlson looking to fire. He has a man. And out of bounds at the Maryland 42-yard line is 85. Ken Wipsinski, the tight end, the sophomore from Green Bay, Wisconsin. One of the better passing efforts put on, uh, or better passing plays, I should say, put on by the Gophers. Of course, it's late in the game, and I'm sure the Terrapins are in their prevent defense. Let them take the short ones, just not go all the way with 244 left in the contest. Well, not trying to second guess Minnesota or Mr. Carlson. You know, one wonders why that wasn't being done a couple of minutes ago. But in any event, they're also going to benefit from a Maryland penalty, penalty against the Terrapins. And now the ball is being moved all the way down to the 27-yard line of Maryland. I'm sure we have, yes, it's personal foul. Personal foul against Maryland. Now, the Terrapins are leading by 10. And there's 2.44 to go in this game. It is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. Carlson brings out the Gophers of Minnesota. Pressure and trips. He got back to the line of scrimmage. That is all. And the clock continues to run with now two and a half minutes to play in his first Hall of Fame Classic. Jim Carvelas together with Don Perkins, Howard David, Birmingham, Alabama, the football capital of the South. Tomorrow night, the Tangerine Bowl over most of these Mislu television stations. That should be a good one as well. Carlson fires, no one there. Whoa. Number 86 was the intended receiver, Jeff Anhorn. The pass was so high from Carlson that Anhorn just could not believe it. He stood there and watched the ball sail about 10 feet over his head. Lloyd Burris, defensive back from Maryland, was closest to the ball with 2.04 to play in the game. It brings up third down, 11 yards to go. The ball at the Maryland 28-yard line. Minnesota in possession. Maryland 17, Minnesota 7. From Birmingham, Alabama, this is the first Hall of Fame Classic. Going out with Skinny Marsha again? Yeah, runt. 
Does Dad know you're using his English leather aftershave? Yeah, and his English leather shave cream, shampoo, mm. and stick deodorant. Man's got to develop good grooming habits. Mmm, smooth. You smell good, too. Too good for skinny Marsha. Hey, I hear all Marsha's men wear English leather or... Don't say it. <laughs> English leather for men. Captain, are you authorized to drive the General's car? That's my car, Colonel. Yours? I drive this Volari, and you drive this AMC Concord DL, sir. Captain, do you realize you've outlooked me to superior officer? Guilty with an explanation, sir. My new Concord DL is priced less than your Volari. That is priced less than that? Are you trying to make a fool out of me, Corporal? The new AMC Concord DL. The luxury Americans want. The size America needs. Two minutes, four seconds remaining to play in the game. Minnesota down 17-7. They have the ball third and 11 on the Maryland 28-yard line. Avery back in at quarterback. Look at this time, but a flag is down. The pass broken up. There's going to be a holding call against Minnesota back at about the 32 or 3 yard line, I believe. Flag went down as they were protecting Avery. He got great protection. Pass protection is always a lot better when someone's holding, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a holding infraction against the Gophers. Pass was intended for number 31, Steve Bro. You saw Steve walking a long walk out of the end zone. Jim, we've already made a presentation, as the viewers uh, saw a few minutes ago, with uh, Steve Brett from Black & Decker, the Black & Decker Defensive Player of the Game Award to Brad Carr from Maryland. The offensive players jointly, Larry Dick of Maryland, and the outstanding wide receiver, Chuck White, number five, who had a brilliant evening as well. I think it's a good show. I think it's a good show. Two great offensive performers tonight for Maryland. All right, third down. A lot of yards. And a good reception down at the 37-yard line made by uh, 83, Glenn Borkman. Tight end, 6'4", 219-pound sophomore from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. That's still going to be a lot of yards shot. They have to get to the Maryland 17. They're now at the 37. They need 20 more. Minnesota's called a timeout. Avery's going to come over and talk to his coaching staff. From Birmingham, Alabama, this is the first Hall of Fame Classic. How does your foot spray stack up against odor eaters? Well, it would take up to four cans to get the three-month protection of one pair of odor eaters. Most sprays are full of powder, and they can be a little messy. Odor eaters are full of activated charcoal, just about the most effective odor destroyer known. How about perspiration? Odor Eater Salt Foam absorbs it, helps feet stay dry. Get Odor Eaters for regular shoes and new super tough Odor Eaters for work shoes, sports shoes, and sneakers. They both destroy odor all day for three months. One minute, 35 seconds remain in this first Hall of Fame Classic from Birmingham, Alabama. It's been a good show all the way around. Good football game, great promotion, a crowd of 47,000 here. And the Hall of Fame Classic is on its way. Minnesota now on a fourth and 20 from the Maryland 37. They need to get to the 17-yard line to keep whatever hopes alive that they do have. Avery being pressured. Avery is held up by Olkowitz out of bounds. Now we have some extracurricular activities uh, brewing on the sideline. Nothing very serious. Broken up very quickly with a minute 29. Maryland will take over Howard David and the Maryland band. Uh, this is customary for Maryland when they when they have won a game or it's about to win a game. The band will play Amen. That's like uh, Red Auerbach used to do with the Boston Celtics. He'd light up a cigar. Maryland plays their song. You know, I, when I was downstairs before, uh, I passed Dick Kazmaier, the president of the uh, Football Foundation, and I said, Dick, what do you think? Would you say it was a success? He said without question. His quiet, subdued manner that he had. Talk about a great back. He was a great back. 
Larry Dick, Maryland, co-winner, Schick Offensive Player of the Hall of Fame Classic. He shares the award with his outstanding wide receiver, Chuck White. And what a passing combination they have been tonight. They got it together. They really See, had guys, the timing down. You guys chickened out, too. So you couldn't pick between the two. I mean, you sit, called me a chicken earlier sit on. Sit on the fence. That's what you do. You always sit on the fence. Right. And don't fall either way. Right now, Maryland, uh, with Mark Mangus just falling down to uh, eat up the clock. It's running away with a minute 21 to play. Talk about Dick Kazmaier, Brad Carr, as you see, the Maryland uh, defensive uh, defensive player of the game, Black and Decker uh, Award. Again, give a lot of credit to Maryland. Obviously, they they've won this game, but the Minnesota Golden Gophers are a team of the future. There's no doubt about that. Nothing to be ashamed of here tonight. A great season for them, and their good seasons are in the future, I believe. Now a whistle blows. I believe it's Maryland taking too much time with 51 seconds remaining in the game. What a great job these people in Birmingham did. Everywhere we went the last couple of days, the people couldn't have been nicer. Maryland players who've been in five bowl games told me uh, in the hotel that they thought that the treatment here was the best I've ever had. And uh, they deserve the success. It was a comment I heard from all the players, yeah. Jim. All of them were talking about what a great time they had here in Birmingham. And uh, they had a greater time on the field as well. Mangus goes down. A big scramble. The clock continues to run. 45, 44, 43 seconds. Again, the Tangerine Bowl tomorrow night over most of these Mislu stations. Howard, Don Perkins, Dwayne Dow will be there. Good halftime show on the High School All-Americans from Don Tollefson. This evening, it was Maryland winning the first Hall of Fame game in Birmingham, Alabama, in front of 47,000 people. A great show, a great win for Jerry Claiborne, and a good show by this fine Minnesota club. You see the clock. There's the story. We'll have one more play in this football game after after another delay of game penalty. We may lead the league in delay of game <laughs> penalties tonight. Hey, Don, uh, what Jim forgot to mention was the fact that all the Maryland players that commented to him made their comments in the coffee shop to him because he spends more time in the coffee shop than anybody I've ever seen in my life. He does know that. how to find the coffee shop. <laughs> Glad you said that because uh, I wouldn't want the people to think I was spending time anywhere else. In other uh, places, yeah. No, no, you, would, you do spend your time in the coffee shop. Can't job. get in much trouble in the coffee shop. Most people can't. All right, this will be the last play of the first Hall of Fame Classic. Mangus goes down. The clock continues to run 6-5. And the final score here in the first Hall of Fame Classic, Maryland 17, Minnesota 7. For Don Perkins and Howard David, Jim Carvellis, Merry Christmas to you. Botany 500. This season, let Botany 500 tailor your wardrobe American style from the Chase, Bentley, and Cartier collections. Come to Mama Leone's where the family can sit around the table, tell those old stories, and maybe some new ones. Mama Leone's where the fun and food never stop. Birmingham Hyatt House. When in Birmingham, stay at the official hotel of the Hall of Fame Bowl. The Hyatt House, where you always get a courtesy ride to and from the airport, shopping and for tennis. And where you'll enjoy Hugo's Gourmet Restaurant overlooking the city. Birmingham Hyatt House. Expect more from us. From the heart of college football, Birmingham, Alabama, you have just seen the Hall of Fame Classic, America's newest football bowl game. Be with us on most of these same stations tomorrow night when the Mislu Television Network continues its 1977 bowl game coverage when Florida State meets Texas Tech in the 32nd Annual Tangerine Bowl from Orlando, Florida. Join Dwayne Dow, Don Perkins, and Howard David for all the play-by-play -play action on Mislu TV with more bowl game coverage than any other television network.
of Fame football classic has been a feature presentation of Television Sports USA, the Mislu Television Network.